Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we are going to discuss debt repayment method. First of all, if we want to break down the title debt repayment into two words, the first one is debt, which is interest bearing loan, or any loan bears interest or involves interest. While Repayment indicates to the method by which the borrower will pay interest or repay the principal value of this loan. So, what are the main types of debt repayment method? Actually, there are two types of, uh, of uh, repayment methods. The first one is amortization method, and the second one is sinking fund method. Uh, in this slide, we want to recall uh, basic concepts. Uh, given a loan uh, will be taken by uh, some individual uh, on uh, current basis or uh, on the current uh, year to be repaid uh, after a specific number of years uh, and pay certain interest rate. So at maturity, the individual, this individual will repay the principal or the original value of the loan in addition to the interest accrued over the, uh, uh, the loan uh, maturity or over the loan uh, time period. Uh, the inverse uh, transaction of uh, uh, compounding is the discounting. So if we want to discount the maturity value or the future value of the loan, we will get the principal value or the original value of the loan. In other words, the original value of the loan is the present value of its future value. Uh, so if the uh, individual uh, uh, decided to repay the, the principal of the loan uh, and the interest accrued by paying equal periodic payments uh, equal periodic payments uh, periodic uh, refers to uh, annual uh, uh, or uh, monthly or semi-annually or a quarterly payments so if the individual wants to repay the, the principal loan in addition to the interest accrual per, year, per uh, uh, time period so uh, in this case uh, we have a case of annuity uh, uh, through which the, ind uh, the individual will repay the loan and its accrued interest uh, by paying uh, annuity of in uh, payments or over uh, annual payments. Uh, by the same way, as a single amount, we can uh, calculate the present value or discounting the the, this payment to find the present value of this entity. So the value, the original value of the loan is the present value of n entity of payments. So the present value of entity equals the original value of the loan and it can be obtained by multiplying the annual payments or, or the periodic payments times the present value interest factor for annuity. So the present value of the future or of the equal uh, periodic payments equals to the original value of the loan. Let me show an simple uh, example about loan amortization method. Uh, say uh, one person wants to borrow uh, 6,000 Egyptian pounds to be repaid over four years. The bank agreed to grant this loan against 10% uh, interest rate compounded annually. The required is to uh, show how the bank calculate the interest in each payment using amortization method. Say you borrowed 6,000 Egyptian pounds uh, today at 10% uh, interest rate over the next four years. And you decide, and instead of repaying the amount of interest, the amount of uh, principal, in addition to the interest, 
after four years, which will uh, be 8,784, you will pay uh, uh, annual, equal annual payments or installments. So you will pay uh, uh, amount of payments at the end of year one and the amount of payments at year two and the amount of payments at year three and the amount of payments at year four. In other words, you decided to repay the loan in addition to the interest over uh, uh, or, by, uh, or by paying four installments over the next four years. This means at the end of each year, you will pay one amount of payment. The first observation in this example is that in, in these payments are equal. So this is a case of annuity, specifically ordinary annuity. Why? Because each amount of payment will be conducted at the end of the period. In our case, the period is year. So at the end of each year, you will pay equal amount of payment. The second observation is that in each payment, uh, 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 we have uh, uh, interest payment and principal or portion of the principal will be repaid. Why? Because in each payment we want to repay portion of the 6,000 Egyptian pounds in addition to the interest accrued uh, uh, for this period of time. So at the end of year one, uh, uh, there will be interest accrued for, the, uh, for this time which is one year, and we will repay one, uh, or uh, we will repay portion of the principal. And by the same way, in the pay, in the second payment, uh, there is, will be uh, a break, uh, will be broken down into interest and portion of the principal. Uh, payment three will include interest uh, payment and principal payment, and uh, uh, in uh, payment four. Uh, or the payment for will include the interest payment and the principal payment. But usually the interest payment in each payment in each payment doesn't equal the principal payment. So we want to uh, uh, know the allocation or the distribution of, of interest payment and the principal payment in each periodic payment. Uh, you can uh, observe uh, the interest expense or the interest payment and the principal payment in each uh, periodic installment by constructing what is known as loan amortization schedule. But before uh, constructing the loan amortization schedule, we firstly have to find how much the equal period, the equal periodic payment will be. So to uh, perform the loan amortization method, the first step is to identify how much uh, we, uh, you will pay at the end of each period. Uh, we ask about the equal periodic payment, the equal annual payment, which is BMT. Uh, we can uh, find the PMT by using the equation of present value of annuity, in which we can uh, divide the present value of annuity. In our case, will be the principal or the original value of the loan divided by the present value interest factor for annuity. After calculating how much you will be at the end of each period, we can construct the amortization schedule. Why? To break down each payment into interest and the principal component to f identify how much uh, uh, interest you will pay in in uh, in each uh, PMT or each amount of payment and how much of the principal you will repay uh, uh, in each uh, payment and also uh, the, the amortization schedule will show the principal uh, balance. Uh, outstanding after each payment or at the end of each period. So uh, 
uh, in, uh, to, uh, to find the value of annual loan payment, actually, uh, you will recall the equation of a present value of annuity in which you will multiply uh, uh, amount of payment times present value interest factor for annuity. Uh, uh, the principal debt value is uh, the present value of annuity is the principal value of debt in our case will be 6000 so uh, you you know that in the present value of annuity or the uh, principal debt value is 6000 Egyptian pound and interest rate is 10 percent n is 4 so find the amount of payment we can rearrange this equation to be BMT equals BVN or present value of NAT over the present value uh, present value interest factor for NAT. This factor can be uh, obtained by applying these equations in which uh, we uh, uh, will subtract this uh, this term, which is one over one plus R. R in our case is ten percent. Power N N is 4 divided by 0.1 which is interest rate so the present value interest factor at 10% for uh, four years will be 3.1696 okay so we can use this ratio uh, we will substitute this ratio in the equation we uh, uh, divide 6000 by 3.1698 to get 1,892 Egyptian pounds. This means at the end of each year, the borrower will repay or will pay 1,892 Egyptian pounds to repay the 6,000 uh, 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 in addition to the interest accrued over the four years. So the first step will be achieved by finding the amount of payment at the end of each year. Step two, use the amortization table, table to show distribution of interest and the principal payment in each annual payment. Okay, the amortization schedule, uh, the first column uh, includes the uh, periods and the first row, the payment and the interest portion and the principal portion and the, the last column for the principal balance or the end period uh, uh, balance of loan or how much of this uh, the principal is remaining or unpaid so uh, in current year the principal balance is the original value of debt or the original value of loan so you borrowed 6000 egyptian pounds uh, uh, in current year this 6,000 uh, 6, Egyptian pounds will be uh, 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 per interest of 10%. So for one year, the 6,000 will uh, will uh, per 10% uh, 10% uh, uh, interest rate. So at the end of year one, uh, the poor one will be interest uh, 600. 600 is 10 percent of the unpaid uh, or uh, unpaid uh, uh, loan or the remaining principal of the loan so you uh, you borrowed 6000 and uh, uh, for one the, the first year will uh, uh, will bear or will charge 10 percent of the of the uh, original value of debt so the first installment should cover 600 Egyptian pounds, but uh, the poor one actually will pay amount of payment, equal amount of payment of 1,892, which will cover 600 as interest, and the remaining will be used to reduce the uh, 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 the remaining will be used to repay portion of the principal. So the principal portion will be the difference between the amount of payment and the interest uh, payment. So the principal should be decreased 
by 1292. In other words, at the end of year one, the borrower will pay the, uh, the in first installment. First installment equals 1892. The interest accrued in for this period is only 600. So this amount will cover 600 and the remaining will be used to decrease the principal. Call it the principal portion. So the principal will will be decreased by 1292 from what from 6000 so the original uh, or the principal or the outstanding balance of debt is 6000 will be decreased by 1000 uh, 1292 so the outstanding balance of debt will be the difference which will which uh, equal uh, 4707 so the uh, the uh, end uh, end period uh, or the the outstanding balance of debt at the end of year one at the end of uh, year one will be four thousand seven hundred seven. How we obtain this amount? The the first year or the first or the original value of debt less than the principal portion in the first installment you will get the uh, end period uh, balance of debt or the balance of debt at the end of year one. Okay, so this borrower has outstanding uh, value of debt equals 4,707, which will charge more 10% interest for the next year. So the interest accrued for uh, at the end of year two will be 470, not 600. Why? Because the, in, the, the, the loan decreased from 6,000 to 4,700. The 4,700 char will charge uh, 470 because the interest rate is 10%. But at the end of the year, actually, the poor one will be 1,892. So the difference will be 1,422. This means that the outstanding balance of debt will, uh, will be decreased by 1,422 uh, uh, because this amount will be uh, 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 used to reduce or repay the outstanding balance. The outstanding balance is 4,707. Uh, less 1,422. The outstanding uh, of debt will be 3,285. Or the, uh, the, uh, the loan, the principal value of loan will be 300. Uh, 3,285. This amount will be the uh, the value of the loan at the end of year what? Of year two. At the end of year three, this amount will charge more 10% interest. So, the interest accrued at the end of year three will be 328. Why? Because the amount of uh, uh, amount of uh, loan uh, uh, unpaid is 3,285. Will charge 10 percent, so the interest will be 328 at the end of year three. But as we said, the uh, the poor one will be 1,892 at the end of year three. So that well, the difference between what the installment value and the interest uh, charged or the interest payment will be used to reduce outstanding balance of debt. So the principal portion or the amount of payment will be used to reduce, to repay the principal is 1,564. The 1,564 will be used to repay the outstanding debt. So the outstanding will be 1, 
1720. Why? Because the principal portion cannot cover the outstanding balance of debt. So it just decreased the amount of, of unpaid uh, loan to be 1720. The 1720 is uh, uh, the unpaid uh, amount of debt at the end of year, uh, year uh, three. So it will charge 10% at the end of year, of year uh, four to be uh, 172 and the borrower will be 1892. So the difference will be 172 Egyptian pound that uh, this will cover the uh, the, uh, the outstanding balance of loan so the principal will be uh, fully repaid at the end of year four so uh, from this exercise we can conclude uh, uh, with three main points the first one, uh, uh, loan amortization method involves a series of equal periodic payments or installment. Second, in each payment, uh, uh, the, the borrower will pay interest on the unpaid balance of loan and repay part or portion of outstanding principal of this loan. The third point is that you know, over the time, the outstanding principal is gradually reduced and consequently, the interest on the unpaid balance will decrease. Let me give a, a, another exercise. If a borrower wants to uh, borrow 7,600 Egyptian pounds uh, for two years, uh, the bank will uh, charge 8% uh, interest rate and they will be compounded quarterly calculate the uh, the interest expense and the uh, portion of the principal will be repaid in each installment because this uh, the, the this interest uh, of eight percent will be compounded quarterly this means that the installment will be quarterly uh, uh, payments okay the required is show how the bank calculate the interest in each payment using the amortization method so what is uh, the uh, the the payment uh, or what uh, how much the poor one will be at the end of each quarter over the next two years so the first step in the loan amortization method is to calculate the value of a quarterly loan payment. Recall the equation of uh, present value of annuity in which we will multiply amount of payment times present value interest factor for annuity. And recall that uh, the uh, present value of annuity is the principal value of debt. So the present value of annuity is the value of debt which is 7,600 Egyptian pounds uh, at 8%, uh, uh, but this rate is compounded quarterly. So we will multiply the annual rate of 8% over the number of quarters per, per year, which is four. So the periodic interest will be 2%. How we obtained 2%? Eight over four equals 2%. And the number of periods will be will not be two years. It will be uh, 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 it will be eight quarters. How we will multiply number of years times number of quarters per year. So number of periods will be eight period. So what is uh, or how much the amount of payment will be? We will arrange this equation uh, uh, to be amount of payment equals present value uh, of annuity over present value interest factor for annuity. Present value interest factor for annuity, you can use uh, the table or uh, by uh, uh, calculating using this equation. In this equation, we will uh, 
divide 1 over 1 plus rate, periodic rate of 2% of our number of, of periods, which is 8 uh, quarters. Uh, we will subtract this term from 1 and uh, divide the result over 2%, we, uh, which equals 7.3255 uh, as a factor. Uh, so we will substitute or use this uh, uh, result or this factor in the equation. So we will uh, divide uh, uh, 7,600 uh, over 7.3255. Uh, we will get 1,037 Egyptian pounds. This means what? This means uh, the power will repay uh, the the principal of seven thousand six hundred plus the in, uh, the interest uh, by paying equal amount equal quarterly uh, amount of one thousand thirty seven Egyptian pounds over the next two years uh, or over uh, eight uh, payments. After calculating the amount of payment at uh, uh, the end of each quarter, we can construct the amortization schedule. Uh, we need uh, amount of payment, which is 1037 Egyptian pounds, and the quarter interest uh, rate uh, is 2%, and the number of quarters is 8. So the amortization schedule will include column for the payment number, which will be 8 quarters in addition to the current period. Uh, the second column for the installment or the amount of payments and the third for the interest portion included in each installment and the, th the fourth is for the principal portion the amount of payment uh, used to, to decrease outstanding balance of debt and the last column uh, will be for the outstanding balance of debt at the end of each period so uh, as we said before uh, at the, uh, the, the end of the first period, or the, at the end of uh, the first quarter, the borrower will pay the installment to cover the interest accrued uh, that will be charged on the outstanding or at the, at the beginning balance of debt at the beginning of the year. At the beginning of the first quarter, the uh, principal balance uh, was 7,600. So at the end of the first quarter, uh, the interest charged on this amount will be 2% times the uh, 7,600 will be 152. But actually, the installment is uh, greater than the interest. So the difference will be 885 which will be used to uh, repay for uh, the repay portion of the outstanding balance of debt. So the 885 will decrease the outstanding balance of debt, which is 7,600, to be 6,740, and so on till the end of the uh, uh, quarter number eight, uh, in which the uh, the principal portion included in this uh, uh, payment is 1017 which will cover uh, the uh, which will uh, fully cover the principal balance uh, but this uh, this, will, uh, this is a difference or this is a slight difference between the principal balance and the principal portion uh, due to the uh, due to rounding the decimals uh, you can observe from uh, this uh, exercise the interest portion will uh, will decrease over time. Why? Because the uh, uh, the principal balance will decrease over time. Uh, in uh, uh, conversely, the uh, the principal portion will uh, uh, increase over time. Uh, in other words. The increase in the principal portion will decrease the principal uh, balance, uh, so the interest portion will decrease over time. So, uh, 
after a, a specific number of periods, the borrower may want to uh, calculate the outstanding balance. Uh, so the the borrower will uh, may want to uh, pay off the outstanding balance of the debt in a lump sum, uh, or uh, he or she may want to refinance this loan by taking another loan. So the uh, the the borrower wants to uh, uh, calculate how may, how much the outstanding balance of debt is. The borrower or the bank may want to calculate the outstanding balance of debt uh, to uh, sell the loan contract to another bank. Okay, so we want to learn how to calculate the outstanding balance of debt in a specific or after a specific period of time. Using the last um, exercise in which uh, you can uh, borrow uh, 7,000 uh, 600 Egyptian pounds and uh, uh, you will repay them and uh, in addition to the interest accrued over uh, equal inst equal quarterly installments of 1037 Egyptian pounds the borrower paid the first and the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth installment and uh, after uh, he or she paid the, uh, the fifth uh, amount or, or the fifth installment, uh, he wants to calculate how much the balance of loan outstanding is. So, uh, uh, before paying the, the, the remaining uh, installments, which uh, will be three installments over the next three quarters. Uh, the first uh, method the borrower uh, can use to calculate the outstanding balance of the loan after five quarters is to calculate the future value of the original loan which will be uh, will compounding the 7600 at 2% quarter interest rate over the five periods to be 8391 um, this means uh, what? This means uh, the, the, this loan uh, uh, will accumulate at 2% uh, over the next five quarters uh, to be 8,391. This is the a future value or the accumulated value of the loan. But the poor were paid 1,037 uh, over the previous five quarters so we will calculate future value of the annuity future value of the first five uh, installments will uh, be obtained by multiplying the amount of payment which is uh, uh, 1037 Egyptian pounds times future value interest factor for annuity at two percent for five periods so we will uh, multiply 1037 Egyptian pounds times 5.24 uh, 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 as a factor to get 5,399. This means that uh, uh, you have financial obligations of 8,391 and you have uh, accumulated the uh, value of your money uh, at 5,399. So the outstanding balance of debt will be the difference. So the balance or outstanding balance after five installments will be the, the difference between future value of the original loan, which is 8,391, and the future value of the payment already made. So the outstanding balance uh, uh, at the end of quarter five will be the difference between 8,391 and the 5,399. So the outstanding balance will be 2,992 uh, Egyptian pounds. This and this uh, method to calculating the outstanding balance of debt, uh, actually, we used the previous, uh, uh, the previous uh, installment 
and the accumulated value of the uh, original value of the debt. So this method is called retrospective method. Why? Because we used the historical values of installment and the original, uh, the future value of the original uh, uh, loan. Uh, we can, uh, the borrower, we uh, can use another uh, method to find the uh, the balance of the loan outstanding after five quarters. Uh, actually, at the end of quarter five, uh, uh, the remaining uh, the remaining payments or the remaining installments will be uh, three installments. Uh, so. Uh, the, uh, in other words, the, uh, the borrower uh, should pay three installments in the future. Uh, but the, uh, he wants to calculate how much is the balance of, uh, of the, this loan outstanding. So he will uh, calculate the present value of the future or, or the remaining uh, installments. This is called the prospective method because we take in consideration the 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 uh, future installments or the expected uh, payments the borrower should pay. So the balance of debt at uh, uh, the end of quarter five uh, equals present value of the uh, the annuity or present value of the future uh, 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 payments. So we will discount the 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 first installment and the second installment and the third installment. So we will use the present value uh, of annuity, which uh, uh, in which we will multiply the amount times the present value interest factor for annuity at two uh, percent interest rate for three quarters. So uh, the balance of uh, outstanding balance of loan equals uh, 1035 so, uh, sorry 1037 times uh, 2.88 which is the uh, present value interest factor for any team equals 2992 Egyptian bonds let me show an uh, another uh, example of a loan uh, of two thousand dollars with interest twelve uh, percent compounded uh, monthly is to be amortized uh, uh, by equal payments at the end of each month over a period of eighteen months determine the outstanding balance at the end of each uh, month okay the required is to calculate the month monthly loan payment and use a retrospective uh, method and uh, our, uh, prospective method to uh, calculate the outstanding balance uh, uh, at the end of eight uh, months. Okay, uh, depicting the uh, timeline, uh, monthly debt payment uh, will be uh, obtained by dividing the principal value of debt over present value interest factor for entity. Uh, present value and this factor for entity can be obtained by the uh, calculating this equation in which we will uh, divide 1 over uh, 1 plus uh, 1 uh, percent or power number of a quarter uh, number of months uh, months which uh, which is 18 over 1 percent which is the monthly interest rate to get 16.39 uh, this is the present value interest factor for entity. Okay, we will use this factor to get the monthly payment. So the monthly payment will be 2000, which is the principal value of debt. Over 1639, we will get 121.97, approximately 122 dollars uh, at the end of each month. Okay. Uh, so the uh, the power will be 122 at the end of each month over 18 months. Okay, the required is to calculate uh, if the uh, the power wants to calculate the outstanding balance 
at the end of, uh, of month eight. Uh, using the, using uh, the retrospective method, which uh, consists of three steps. Um, uh, recall the, the re retrospective method uh, indicates that uh, using the past history of debt, uh, actually the payments that has uh, that have been made already. Uh, so the out the outstanding balance of debt at K uh, period or at the end of K period uh, equals the accumulated value of original debt minus the accumulated value or the future value of payments made to date. So we want to find the outstanding balance of debt at the end of month eight. Uh, actually, uh, uh, the poor war uh, took $2,000 uh, before eight months. So uh, this loan can be accumulated to uh, at 1%, which is the monthly interest rate monthly interest rate is 1% uh, over uh, 8 months to be $2,165 but the investor actually paid 8 installments 8 monthly payments of 122 for each which can be accumulated uh, using the future value of NUT equation in which we will multiply the monthly payment times the future value interest factor for NUT. So future value of eight installments can be obtained by multiplying the, uh, the payment of 122 times the factor of 8.29. So the uh, future value of eight installments will be $1,010. Uh, uh, your your credit is 1000 or your uh, future value of your payments actually accumulated to be $1,010 and your loan uh, uh, the future value of your loan is 2165 so the difference is the outstanding balance of your loan so to uh, the outstanding balance at the end of month 8 will uh, will be the difference between the 2165 and the 1010, which is the future value of your payment, to be $1,155 is the outstanding balance of debt. Using the uh, prospective method, which uh, uh, simpler than the uh, retrospective method, in which simply we will, uh, take, uh, we will find the present value of the unpaid uh, or the remaining installments. So uh, if you want to calculate the outstanding balance of debt at the end of month eight, so you will uh, uh, calculate the present value of the remaining balance, uh, remaining installments to, uh, to uh, uh, calculate how many installments uh, remaining you assembly, uh, you can subtract N, which is the number of all uh, periods a number of all months, uh, which is 18 months, minus the number uh, uh, number of uh, a number of the months uh, 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 at which you want to calculate the uh, the outstanding balance of debt, which is uh, month eight. So n minus k, n is 18 minus k uh, is which is eight equals 10. So the remaining uh, in installment or the remaining amounts in the future will be 10 in installments. So you will uh, want to calculate the present value of 10 in installments. Each installment is $121.97. So the outstanding balance of debt at the end of month 8 will be discounted value or present value of the remaining 10 monthly payments. So we will multiply the value of each installment times the present value interest factor for the NUT of 121 at 1% over 10 periods. So uh, uh, the installment of 121 times the factor of 9.47, 
So the remaining balance of outstanding loan, uh, 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 or the, the value of outstanding loan will be $1,155. Uh,